HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. Welcome back to Heritage Radio Network on tour here at Slow Food Nations in Denver. Um, This is our second day of doing live interviews with all the phenomenal people here at Slow Food Nations. Um, Before we get started with our next interview, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for making our coverage today possible. Big thanks to the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts. Big Green Egg, Hearst Ranch, and of course, Slow Food Nations for having us for the third year in a row. It is always a pleasure to be here. Um, So now we're going to jump into a conversation. Oh, by the way, I'm Hannah Forden. Hello. Um, We're going to jump into a conversation about one of my favorite things in the entire world, pizza. Um, And as many of our listeners know, um, we are the world's only pizza-powered food podcast network, Our studio is made of two shipping containers in the backyard of Roberta's Pizza in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Um, So come say hello if you're ever there. Um, So I want to welcome my guests today. Um, We have Antonio Starita and Pasquale Cozzolino. Did I say that correctly? Yep, perfect. Excellent. And they are um, here at Slavid Nations collaborating on uh, a project called, will you say the name of your? Le Cinque Stagioni. Beautiful, yes, of course. My Italian is not as as beautiful (laughs) as Pasquale's. Um, So uh, the two of you um, have your own restaurants. Um, Antonio uh, is a third-generation pizza maker from Napoli. Um, uh, Tell me a little bit about what brought the two of you together. I mean, actually, I'm from Naples as well. I grew up um, eating East Pizza. Oh, fabulous. (laughs) So, uh, you know, in Naples you can smell, you can taste, and you can think about pizza everywhere. It's every, in every corner. It's like Starbucks here. <laughs> <laughs> much better. <laughs> much better option. And um, we, we came along together because, uh, first of all, we are collaborating with the same uh, flower brand. Mm-hmm. And second, we knew each other already because, you know, from the same city, from the same industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's an honor for me to travel with him and do this kind of shows. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and you're both based in New York, that's right? No, no, no. Oh, no. I mean, um, he, has a, he has a restaurant God. in New York, but he's based in Naples. Oh, okay. So your, your, uh, Antonio's restaurant in New York is Don Antonio Pizza, and Pasquale's yeah. restaurant is Ribalta. Ribalta, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about how you brought uh, Neapolitan-style pizza to New York. It was uh, 2011, mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, the movement of Pizza Napoletana was just starting in New York. Now you can find Pizza Napoletana everywhere in the, in the country. And, uh, you know, I had this uh, desire to bring some of my heritage food uh, to a city that I always dreamed to, come, to go. Mm-hmm. And I was a little bit scary about if I would like or not. But uh, once I stepped in, I felt at home. Mm-hmm. And then I I stayed. You're gonna and stay then, forever. Yeah, and then sharing the you know the pizza and uh, starting to do a real Neapolitan pizza because there wasn't there was some pizza but not too close to the authentic. Mm-hmm. And then it was a success. And now you know I can tell that I'm one of the one that started the the movement of Neapolitan pizza in yeah. the U.S. And I have to say, I mean, if you can can succeed 
uh, with a pizza-focused restaurant in New York, there's obviously a lot of competition. A lot. Um, and I think everyone in New York considers themselves a personal expert on what good pizza is. So if you can make it there, I think it's you a... You can it's make a, it everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, Pasquale, if you'd be kind enough to translate um, for yes. Antonio. Antonio, I would love to hear about um, your family history making pizza and what... How would you define Naples style pizza for an American audience? What sets it apart from other variations on, on the theme? Um, uh, detto, tu, che, raccontaci un poco della storia della tua famiglia e poi eh, cosa pensi della pizza napoletana confrontata con le altre pizze degli altri stili che ci sono in America, come la pizza americana, new yorkese o le altre. Quindi la mia famiglia ha 118 anni di storia fermatevi ogni tanto che devo tradurre his family his family uh, his pizzeria has 118 years old nella mia pizzeria è stato girato il film l'oro di Napoli in his pizzeria was uh, shoot a movie uh, gold of Naples with uh, Sofia Loren did you get to meet Sofia Loren ho avuto l'onore di far assaggiare la pizza yes. a Papa Voitiva He prepared a pizza for Pope uh, Waitila, the, the, the two, day, two popes ago. <laughs> Dalla pizzeria di Madrede siamo riusciti a, a mettere su ancora tre pizzerie, Milano, Torino e Firenze. And uh, his pizzeria was uh, viral, and now they have a pizzeria in New York, Milan and uh, Rome. Wow. Per quanto riguarda la pizza napoletana non è che c'è tanto da dire, una cosa molto semplice è noi come centenari, perché noi abbiamo l'unione dei centenari pizzerie di Napoli che hanno superato i cento anni e quindi e, so, a... e quindi la nostra preoccupazione è quella di portare un prodotto fuori dall'Italia che sia quello originale perché mi accorgo che in America e in altri stati molte volte chiamano pizza napoletana quella che non è. So he said that uh, he's part of the group of centenari, that means 100 years old, cioè pizzeria that, has, are, that are older than 100 years, mm -hmm. and uh, their goal is to preserve the authenticity of Neapolitan pizza. He doesn't have any, nothing against the other styles, but he wants to protect someone they say that is pizza napoletana but it's not mm -hmm. so that kind of uh, preservation you know so what are the traits that makes that make it napoletano pizza um, is it the, the, the is dough it is it the sauce is it the yeah as uh, wine and other things that you can find in Europe there is a, a European community uh, uh, like um, steps like mm -hmm. rules yeah. and uh, it's about the dough the oven which kind of flour which kind of uh, tomato which kind of basil so that all this is made because we want to uh, protect the authenticity of pizza napoletana that is the first pizza ever in the world mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Antonio how old were you when you made your first pizza by yourself? Quando, quando, quando anni avevo quando fatto la prima pizza? 14 anni 14 years old Okay, so you started started young. 14, yeah. <laughs> and how about you, Pasquale? When did you start? It's funny. I, I did a culinary art school at 14, mm -hmm. and I I stretched my first pizza at, at 16 in the school, and wow. then I start to work at 18. So let's say my first 16, but the, the real one 18. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many um, pizzerias in Naples can boast that? Centinare status of being around for, for over 100 years. Uh, quante pizzerie ci sono delle centenari? Siamo 13 al momento. Mm -hmm. Now they recognize the older than 100 years, 13 pizzerias in Naples. Wow, so it's a, it's a very coveted position. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, what would you say if there was one technique? I mean, obviously the ingredients are so essential, um, but what do you think? As, as someone who might want to make their own pizza at home, do you think um, starting with the type of flour you're using is what's the most essential step to making really beautiful pizza? I think we we both agree on uh, the fact that the most difficult thing is to cook in the pizza. The oven, yes, <laughs> yes. The recipe is very simple. 
Uh, of course, you gotta know the timing because everything is timing. It's like a theater, an actor, he has to know the timing and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, if you choose great ingredients, it's the, you know, it would be even better. Excellent. <laughs> um, and and, and your, your friend Lorenzo was um, telling me to ask, uh, Antonio, how many pizzas do you make in a day? <laughs> I, I have a feeling it's going to be an impressive number. It's scary. This number is scary. I can't. Facciamo molte, molte pizze. Fino a settimana si arriva a 1.600, Inizio settimana siamo sui 900, Okay. Let's say in the beginning of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, is around 900 pizza per day. On the weekend, uh, 1,600, 1,800 pizza. Per day? Per day. That's amazing. Pranzo e cena. So how of long course, does lunch it, and dinner. How long was it, does it take you to make one? Say. You must be very fast. Okay, so yeah, got, uh, the pizza napoletana cooks in uh, 90 seconds. Wow. The oven is uh, 950 degrees. And uh, a, a, an expert pizza maker can stretch a pizza in uh, about 30 seconds. Okay, let's talk about the <laughs> technique. Okay, I think this is one of the most impressive skills uh, out there. Um, how, do you, how do you get down that stretching of the dough? To, to be able to do it so quickly. Um, you got to practice. Practice? Yeah. Do you, have a sp do you throw it up in the air really high? Oh, actually, you don't, don't let... That's don't, just don't tell off. him he's against the freestyle pizza. <laughs> Only food for him. Don't play with the dough. Non mai giocare con la pizza. No, no, no. Accarezzarla. Accarezzarla. Just be very... Gentle. Gentle. Ed è molto importante il forno a legno. Kermes. And the way the oven is prepared is very important too, to mm. get fast um, pizzas. Excellent. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you have going on this weekend for Slow Food Nations. I know you have a, a panel later on today. Um, tell yeah. me about what you're excited to share with Denver. So today between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. I'm going to this panel about, I want to talk about the history of a pizza napoletana, when it born, how born, and a uh, few funny uh, stories about pizza. There is, you want, if you want, I can I give you one. I can give you one pizza. now. Please, please. <laughs> okay, tomato. You know, everybody knows the pizza is the most important pizza is made with tomato. Tomato is not Italian. It's from <laughs> Peru. It used to be gold. It used to be yellow. That's why pomodoro. That means gold apple. And uh, when we brought uh, tomato in Italy. For 100 years, Italians, they didn't eat tomato. They thought it was a poison plant. And after 100 years, we start to eat tomato. <laughs> You're missing out for so long on <laughs> exactly. delicious tomatoes. Um, I'm, I'm curious, um, obviously, both of you are part of a really long history of pizza making. And um, the slow food movement um, originated in Italy. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear, um, as both of you who have businesses in the U.S., um, how have you seen the American palate shift, I think, with movements like the slow food movement, the good food movement, um, as, as Europeans who are based here? I'm curious what your take is and, and where you see us heading. Okay, do you want me to... Yeah, for, I, for both of you. I can start and then I ask you something. Um, I was in the beginning, in 2011, uh, let's, say, let's talk about the pizza napoletana that mm -hmm. is slow food as well. Right. So pizza napoletana in the beginning, you know, we all use fresh tomato, fresh mozzarella, so it's, it's a little bit uh, more wet. Mm -hmm. And people say it's soggy, 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 but that's the reason because we only use fresh ingredients. We don't use shred cheese that is 25 ingredients. We only use fresh mozzarella, it's one ingredient, milk, <laughs> tomato, no mm -hmm. other things. So, in the beginning, it was very tough to get uh, the palate, the palate, the palate. <laughs> <laughs> but now uh, everybody loves loves it, and then is going to the appreciation of authentic food, good food, good ingredients is going up and up. Yeah. And uh, I see that United States give give us, you know, as producer, as chefs, uh, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. to increase the volumes of good food, of yeah. slow food. Yeah. Slow food, the, the philosophy is to enjoy what you have in, uh, in front of you. Just Don't just feel your guts, but savor delici it. delicious yeah. savor in your mouth before. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that's the philosophy of slow food. 
Mm -hmm. Take your time. Don't rush. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I would love, to, uh, yeah, I would love to hear An Antonio's perspective as well. Cosa pensi della, di Slow Food e del fatto che gli americani adesso stanno iniziando a mangiare anche bene che prima no? Cosa vedi nel futuro? Slow Food ci garantisce il prodotto a cui noi andiamo a fare la pizza. Ok, lui dice che uh, Slow Food è una kind of, uh, garantor di ingredienti e dice che è molto importante per comunicare la real uh, in questo caso pizza. In per, US. per noi è molto importante yeah. però But, per noi è molto importante però c'è da considerare che l'UNESCO ci ha riconosciuto come il mestiere da, da conservare quindi noi eh, siamo padroni eh, della pizza napoletana nel mondo ed è nostro obbligo tramandarla in quel modo come l'UNESCO ci ha riconosciuto. It, on top of the slow food uh, pr uh, movement, there is another uh, greetings awards that the pizza napoletana got, in the particularly for pizza maker, mm -hmm. not just the pizza, but the pizza maker. He got the UNESCO uh, heritage, and uh, we are recognized as uh, one of the most important things about pizza. And they say that uh, the two things uh, uh, we want to share with the American pizza makers, American consumers, to get uh, the perfection of uh, the two things. Wow, that's lovely. <laughs> um, and, and I would love to hear your, your highlights um, from, from Slow Food so far. Um, obviously, you've been working very hard making beautiful pizzas. Have you had a chance to taste anything that's really stood out to you or make any connections that were exciting? Yeah, no, I mean, I was a little busy. But yeah, a little busy. <laughs> Did you get a chance to escape? I didn't go out a lot, but, you know, I was communicating with um, the Italian cucina, cucina that is next door. Uh -huh. And, yeah, we, uh, we got a lot of great connections. And I love to work. Um, in, uh, in this industry, I live here, 11 years, my sons, my children are born here in America, and my desire is to uh, fusion the two things and comes up with maybe great local uh, produce and great local ingredients mm -hmm. and uh, get better and better in this country. Yeah, and I have to say, um, if you get a chance to, there's some really excellent pizza here in Denver. There's a restaurant called Cart Driver uh -huh. um, that's in Rhino. And uh, as a New Yorker, you know, you ex don't expect other cities to have really exceptional pizza. But <laughs> shout no, out to no, Cart no, Driver. Yeah. They're incredible. Um, that's amazing. Yes. Well, I want to thank you both so no, much no, for sitting No, no, thank you so much. I don't for Just the last thing, because I like to finish yes. my panels like that. The, fun, the good things of pizza that uh, unite all of us around the world for one reason, the pizza is round, so it's like an egg. So that's why it's the most important food. And we gotta, you, that's why we are here I for love the pizza. It. I love it. Yeah, this, the symbolism of the pizza brings yeah. us all together. Well, if either of you um, would ever like to come visit us in Brooklyn, um, have some Roberta's pizza, I had, I drop had us a line. Um, and yeah, again, thank you so much to Antonio Sarita and Pasquale Cosolino for speaking with us today at Slip Food Nations. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors um, for making our coverage today possible. Uh, the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts, Big Green Egg, Hearst Ranch, and of course, Slip Food Nations for having us. Um, we will be back with more interviews, so don't go away. <laughs>